picking up on the existence of God as we move to who God is. We're not going. We don't do a review. You can go back and see the videos or listen to the audio. We get right on with it, with where we took off last week, last time. All the cultures on this earth proclaim that a murderer is against moral standards. And we're talking about the moral being that we are, that we have, that the animals don't have. Now look at Genesis 20, verse 3. <laughs> there are animals out there, they're like Americans today, they don't breed for life. They will be with this animal, of their species, this mating time, and when it comes to the next mating time, they'll find another mate. And it don't give them a guilt conscience. It don't bother them. But man, outside of what the public school and science wants you to believe that we are from animals. Genesis 20, verse 3. But God came to Abimelech, a man, in a dream by night, and said unto him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. He's laying in bed with a woman that's not his wife. It's another man's wife. What do we call that today in America? We call it a soap opera. We call it a movie. We call it a sitcom. Let's go back to 1898 B.C. Those primitive oh, people that didn't know anything better than what we are today. The advance of society. But Abimelech has not come near her. And he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Lord, are you going to kill us? Said he not unto me, this would be Abram, she is my sister, which he did, and she, Sarah, Sarai, even she herself said, he is my brother. Uh, Lord, they lied to me. He said, it's her sister. She said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, innocence, I have done this. And what he says there in verse 5 is 100% true. But the man of God lied. Lord, I'm with the wrong woman, but he said and she said, which is true. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou did I know thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. I knew where you were standing. I knew they lied to, to you. For I, God, also withheld thee from sinning against me. Can God stop you from sinning? Oh, yes, he can. Therefore suffered I not, uh, suffer I thee not to touch her. If you could have, but I stopped it. But that's not what we're talking about yet. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. He shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, free will. Well, not in that, but that's a free will. Know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Imagine God going to destroy an entire city because of adultery. If he had done that in America today, there'd be no one left but a few Christians who love the word. 
But we're not done yet. Therefore, Abimelech rose early in the morning and called his servants and told us these things in, the, in their ears. And the men were so afraid. The city was so afraid. Because of the judgment of God upon adultery. Now, here we go. Verse 9. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee? That thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin. For this heathen, what about the heathen? Adultery is against the morals of man. You find a backwoods tribesman in, in Africa, the darkest continent, where there's been no civilization, no modernization, and no television, and nothing like that, just living primitive off the land, you will find out if a man touches another man's wife, there would be some form of capital punishment. There's, there's a place in New Guinea... With no Bible. Never read a Bible in a day in their life. That when a woman in her time of life, in her, 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 that monthly thing that comes, they are separated into their own hut for that purpose. And but what does the Bible say that they've never read when a woman has her that time in a month? You're not to touch her, you're not to have anything to do with her. That's a moral of man. Education says treat a criminal with a correctional hotel or motel. Hmm? That's what the education says. For your crime, we're going to give you, here we go, now ready? For your crime, we're going to give you that we have to read you your rights. We will give you a ride to the police station. We will pay for your phone call. And if you can't afford a lawyer, the taxpayer will pay for a lawyer. All right, let's stop right there. I ain't done. This is how morally wrong America is. That was the criminal. Mrs. Gold, or whatever you want to put her name, has had her purse stolen by that guy. Has taken her money out of her wallet and went and bought whatever. Theft. Mrs. Smith or whatever her name is, what does she get? All right, let, let's let's bring this down even serious. A young lady's raped by a man who has his rights read, who has been take, taken to the police station. That woman that has been raped. The innocent party will probably go to the hospital and get a hospital bill. You ever think about that? Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Will your insurance cover rape? She has been humiliated. Try to erase that off her record in her head and her heart. In her mind, she's become filthy. Even thinking that she was the guilty. Now I'm talking about a woman who was pure and didn't ask for nothing. Who, who's a, let's say a Christian woman. We're talking to Christians. Alright? Does the police come and pick her up? Oh, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. She was brought there by an ambulance. Who's going to pay for the ambulance bill? 
I personally got two ambulance bills I'm paying right now, $600 a piece. Okay. Who's going to bring her home from the hospital to her house? Well, 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 what you mean? Are going to have the police department come pick me up like they picked that guy up and brought him? Yes. Right. Oh, so she's going to find her own to her car or call somebody, her husband or somebody, and get a ride home. Okay. Now she's going to have to go to court. Who's going to pay for her lawyer? The criminal, ha if he can't afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you. But what if she can't afford a lawyer? Oh, yeah, she goes out on social services and gets this reject who doesn't even completely fill for the bar 1% of the losers. Who has a caseload of 50,000 kabillion other clients that he don't care. Then this woman has to go in the courtroom. She must speak out of the witness seat. What about the guy that, that did the rape? What about him? He doesn't have the right to speak at all. He may not be questioned. Matter of fact, he may even take the fifth. That means I refuse to say anything, answer any questions that may make me look guilty. You know, that guy's worded some other way. Okay. Okay. Let's say he's committed a crime and he's found guilty. Oh, by the way, if he wants a jury, you got to call in nine people who got to give up their workload. And you got to have McDonald's and you got to have Staples and you got to have this business pay these employees to be in a courtroom for this guy who wants a jury. Because the Constitution right. And then you wonder why your Big, your big Mac costs so much, but well, you got to pay for this guy to sit in a courtroom. Do you want me to shut up? I'm not going to. I'm going to preach the truth. All right, he's convicted. Guilty. She goes home, turns the AC on, it's hot and all that, and she gets an electric bill, a water bill. She gets the hospital bill. She gets the ambulance bill. She needs uh, her, her teeth. Need, uh, she's got a cavity. She's got to pay the dentist to do the cavity. Let's go back to the guy who, who raped her. Okay, now he gets free clothes. He doesn't get utility bills. He gets medical, he gets dental, and he gets three meals a day. And then in the courtroom, we're not done. In the courtroom, there's no Bible allowed, and there's no prayer allowed. And you are going to turn around and say, God bless America, in my left big toe. America has no morals. Why? You've been teaching it since the Wolver no, not Wolver versus Wade, the monkey trial. You've been allowing the public schools to teach an immoral evolution. If you were to talk God in the public schools, you'd be Ten Commandments in the courtroom, which a, te which a judge in Texas was ruled, take it out. It offends us. They didn't say that, but that's why they want it out. So, Con J O Con J Go Con J Go. Now I was in the prison ministry for four years back in Connecticut. Now, if you don't know what that means, that means an inmate has a right for his or her partner to come in marital relations, the marriage bed. You can be in jail, and you can have the right to have your spouse come, and you, you two while in jail, and they have special facilities. Wow. That's the justice system? That was all the moral. You've seen where the morality of America is today on February 4th, 2014. You don't realize how many, it's only been three, 
It's only been four days. No, wait, we're in the new month. No. It's been 35 days in this year. I thought it was January. Realize how many shootings has been in Florida and in America? Since January. Listen, it wasn't even January 1st that afternoon. And my news thing pops up. There was a shooting. But let's move on. Next. The existence of God. We have moved on to evolution versus God. We have looked at atheism. Now, the life from life argument. Evolution said life comes from a thing and not a living one. You will ask a scientist or a teacher in a university or, or a school, say, evolution, did life come from a thing or for a living object? They will tell you, honestly, it came from a non-living thing. Well, I've never seen a thing become a living thing. I've been around for 45, 46 years. My pencil has never got up and walked away on me. But that's what evolution teaches, life from life. The government, through NASA, spends tax dollars going to planets and the universe, the telescopes, to disprove God and Genesis. If we can find life on Uranus, I was going to say get some preparation H, but I'll be nice. I won't say it. That's what they're doing. If they can find life out there on Mars, to them that would disprove Genesis and God. They're trying to find that thing that we came from. Do you know that the Mars rover, that little remote control thing that's up there now running around, making tire prints on a place we don't belong, cost us taxpayers $2.5 billion to prove there's no God and no Genesis. Don't you see this little picture of this nice little rock? There's the answer. It's a rock. I can go down to NASA, this down south with me, go into their building, find a bunch of rocks in their brains. They're cheaper. The Hubble Space Telescope, since 1990, has cost us $10 billion. Now, this is off the NASA website, and this is a quote. Ready? Quote from the NASA website. I don't want you to get this information wrong. The orbiting telescope provided the first evidence our universe is expanding more quickly than it has in the past. It made a more precise estimate of the age of the universe, 12 to 13 billion years old. End of quote. 10 billion years so we can put 13 billion cakes on a birthday cake for the universe? Look at all these pretty pictures. Uh, wait to the pretty picture of New Jerusalem being lightened by God and the Son of the Lord Jesus Christ without no sunspots, without no sin, without no pain. Brand new eyes, brand new body. Hubble won't be able to do anything with his telescope compared to what will be in eternity to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it won't cost $10 billion. It costs the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God. 
Life came from life. One out of nine planets, or eight planets, has life. Eight or seven. Pluto's a planet. Sometimes Pluto's not a planet. Eight planets. They're either too cold or too hot. But that happened by accident. You know, if we didn't have the moon, we wouldn't be here. Psalms 36, 9. Back in the Bible. Psalms 36, 9. Psalms 36, verse 9. For with thee is the fountain of life. It says to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the king of Israel that you can find in the history books. The one that God said is after my own heart, says the fountain of life is with thee, God. Verse 7. Now, how excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wing. And then you run that down to verse 9. O God, there's life came from God. I've got it written down. Find me where it says in your science books that you have written from the author that's a thing of life. Let's see, while we're in Psalms, let's so go Deuteronomy back to Psalms. Let's do Psalm 42, uh, excuse me, Psalms 84 2. I hope I don't miss these. I don't have these in. This order, I have it in another order. But we're in Psalms now, so Psalms 42 2. Psalms 42 2. Life came from God. Psalms 42 2. My soul thirsts for God. For the living God. Psalms 84 2. Psalms 84 2. You say, where are you going? I'm going to heaven. I'm going to show you that evolution defies the Bible. Psalms 84 2. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. Again, that was, that was, that was to the chief musician upon Giddeth, the psalm of the, for the sons of Korah. That's the Levite class of people. Those were God's people. Let's get it one more time. Deuteronomy 5.26. Let's go ask Moses. Deuteronomy 5.26. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God? If you were to ask that scientist, the evolutionist, the Big Bang came from a non-living thing. You as a Christian, life came from a living God. Life from life is the argument. Bible, life came from a living God. Science, life came from a thing. Puppy life comes from a mother dog. A mother cat brings life to a kitten. A couch cannot bring forth another couch. It's impossible. 
But yet, that's what the kids are taught in the schools. A living tree brings other living trees. Life comes from life. You know, if you cut a tree down and fix it all up and put it on the side of a road and you put wires on it, listen, those other utility poles did not come from that one utility pole. That utility pole is dead. There's no more life. It didn't produce the other poles. But evolution will have you to believe that. Go to a rock pile. Here's a whole bunch of rocks. You pick up one rock. Oh, this rock gave birth to all those rocks. No. Which came first? The chicken or the egg? The chicken because it has life. He said, well, the egg, not to its fertilized. You can have an egg all you want sitting there from a chicken if it ain't fertilized. John 11.25 Go in the Gospels now. John 11.25 You cannot be a Christian and you cannot be an evolutionist. And you cannot be an evolutionist and you cannot be a Christian together. They both defy each other. It's oil and water. John 11.25 Jesus said unto her, Uh-oh, this is the Lord Jesus Christ. Better not call him a liar. Watch what Jesus says, okay? I am the resurrection and the life. You know what that means? Living. 14.6. John 14.6. <coughs> Jesus said again, uh-oh, two times. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three, it shall be established. So that's, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, okay, the truth, and the life. Wow. John 10, 28. See, Mr. Scientist, I got it written down. I got it written down in a book that's, that has been tried seven times, that has proven and it has survived history to be exact what do you got you got a bunch of little fancy dancy little cartoons and 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 charts that you mislabel and mischange and all that and files of teeth and all other lies so john 10 28 i give unto them eternal life Not only is our God alive, look at John 5.40. Not only is our God alive, John 5.40, look at this. It'd be just great if God just sat in the universe alive and didn't do nothing. But watch this, John 5, 40. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. You know what our Creator does? He gives us life, offers us life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in it shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, thanks to Satan and sin, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? Not only is our Creator alive, but He has given me personally, since April 21st, 1987, I have eternal life. Not only have I been, I have been created by God, but I have also been regenerated. Let's see 
Mr. Big Bang. Oh, you can't call him Mr. Mrs. Big Oh, you can't say that because it's a thing. Evolution cannot give you no hope. Scientists will never conquer death. All they will do is make it more expensive before you die. First John five twelve. First John five twelve. And that God who is alive came down and was born, conceived by the Holy Spirit in Mary's womb, was born like I was, lived the life I lived, suffered more than I ever suffered, slept, ate, and everything. I have a personal God who knows exactly how I feel. Go ask Job. Job said one time, are you a man like I am? God can say, no, but I will be. Today he says, yes. Do you have eyes that you see? God God say, no, not yet. Today, yes. The eyes of Jesus. I have a God who wept at a funeral. There are Muslims out there that believe in the guy who causes funerals. I just got hit on the list by that by saying that comment. I'm not afraid. I'm not t tearing my tongue out. I'll say it again. You believe in a God that causes funerals. And that with the Roman Catholic Church. When you read Fox's Book of Murderers. You don't give life. You cause death. First John 5.12 he that has the Son, capital S, Jesus Christ, has life. That's me. That's every born-again Christian. That's everyone who will receive the Lord Jesus Christ that God do. Here's your evolution. He that has not the Son of God has not life. That is your NASA, that is your atheist. If they don't have Jesus Christ, they don't have life. They ain't going to find life on Mars. They ain't going to find life out there. Because Jesus Christ is not there. And we'll close there. That's a great, that's a great spot to close. I have a living God who created living things and non-living things and has created me. And not only that, he has given me eternal life. Mr. Evolutionist, Mr. Public School Teacher, Mr. Obama sitting in the President's office, the Oval Office, Mr. College Professor, offer me better than something what God has offered me now. And then give me proof. Proof where men have died for the faith, for the word, and for Jesus. Give me Jesus is the hymn. You can have all the rest. Joyful noise, the world.
Jesus died for you, and the word says his return. 